Okay, so today we're going to learn how to set up our back table. The first step involved in that is actually getting all of the stuff that together that we need. We want to make sure that we have everything. We have our back table, we have our mayor stand, we have our ring stand, and everything else in the room. You know all the items that you're going to have to check for before you actually set things up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my case cart where I'm going to should have all my stuff prepared. I've got my pay pack, set that down in the middle of the back table. I've got a casket of instruments. I like to set it right here on the edge. That way there's nothing sticking out here that's going to take add to the 12 to 18 inches that I'm going to have to stay away from this when I go to get the basket. I'm just going to set it there. I'm not going to open it yet. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the items that I'm going to have to open. I'm going to set them here on the casket so that I don't forget that they're there. I've got a pack of towels, I've got my second pair of gloves, and I've got a couple of peel packs. You're going to need at least two of these in order to open. And then finally, over here, I've got my gown. I can open this up, check for integrity, everything's good. Set the gown there. I got my pack of gloves, which I'll set over here. All right, so once I have everything set up, something is on all three elements. I've got something on the back table, something on the ring stand, several things, and something on the mayo stand. Now I'm ready to open my cat. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break the tape on the back one, and I'm going to announce to the room, masks up, because this is when you're changing from a semi-restricted to a fully restricted area, and you want everybody to have their masks up and know that you're creating your first sterile field. I'm going to flip away from me, towards. I'm going to come over to this side. I'm going to reach in along the sides, grab here, pull backwards, and let it fall straight down. Staying 12 to 18 inches away, if I wasn't, if I had, couldn't make it through, I can move this out of the way. That's fine. In fact, when I come over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I know I'm going to be backing up from this, so I'm going to take my mail stand and maybe move it out of the way. Reach over here, over on the sides, pull back, and let it drop. Now once that's open, I can bring my mail stand and put it back where I want it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open all of these items. Let's do my towels first. You know how to open towels. Got my second pair of gloves. Got some kittners. And I got some suture. Once I've got my basket cleared off, now I can actually go and open it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the indicators on both sides. Yes, they have turned. That does not tell me that it is sterile. It simply tells me that it has been exposed to the sterility. I'm going to check the filters to make sure I can see that the filters are there. Now I will pop it open and I'm going to grab the rings. I'm not going to grab on the side here because my fingers can go in and contaminate there. So I'm going to grab these handles. I'm going to pivot up and then pull back. At this point I check my filters to make sure everything's good. I'm looking for any holes or anything. Normally we would throw these away. We're not going to do that here because we're saving money. You got to save your tuition money, right? Okay. We'll do the same thing for the other one. Pretend I did. Now, I'm going to come over here. I'm not going to get too close, but I'm going to look in there and see if I can see my sterile indicators. Yeah, I got one over here. I'm lucky. All right, I've got one that says okay, so I'm probably okay. If I didn't, couldn't see it at this point, I would want to take note of that because it's going to change what I do in a few minutes. So once that's open, my back table is open, go to my mayo stand. One, find the corner of this side, open it down, 
I like to keep a, one hand on this one as I come in to grab this one, pulling this one down. This way nothing comes back at me. I'm going to keep my fingers on this one as I open this one, pull it down. So I pull that down. Next thing I need are my gloves, which I have here. This is the first set of gloves that I'm going to use. Now the way I do this is I take my elbows, turn them in real tight, point my palms up, and then I flip the gloves onto the field. All right, at this point, I have everything open, and it's time for me to go scrub in. Okay, so I've got my gown and gloves on, and I have turned. Make sure that you turn, because if you don't, that can cause you a whole lot of problems later. When I, now that I am completely sterile, at least here, I can come right up to my back table. It's okay to stand this close. I don't have to worry about keeping that 12 to 18 inch distance. First thing that I like to do is expand my field as much as I can so I have lots of room to work on. That means the very first thing is draping my mayo stand. Turn my hand sideways. Lots of nice room there. It on. Then bring my belly up to it so that nothing falls over. Straight out. Pull it on. At this one I can turn it to the side. Come over here. I can also start to towel off the mayo stand. Yeah, as the towels can go over the edge of the mayo stand, this is the only case that they can because we're sterile all the way around. Tuck it under. Have another one and do the same thing from this side. If you had ties, this would be suture that does not have a needle on it. At this point, you could place it under here, folding this over so just a little tab is sticking out. That way, you can press your hand here and pull a single tie out while leaving the rest in place and it doesn't get tangled up with anything else that you have on your mayo stand. Now, once I have my mayo stand toweled off, the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is deal with my instruments. But I don't wanna do that yet until I put my second pair of gloves on. The idea of the second pair of gloves is that should my hands become contaminated at any point from this point forward, all I have to do is remove the top pair of gloves I can re-glove when my circulator gives me a new pair, but everything underneath still remains sterile, and that saves me from having to completely break down and scrubbing and gowning and gloving again. So now that I have my second pair of gloves on, I can deal with my instrument tray. Now again, I can see that indeed the, the indicator has turned, but if I couldn't see that, if it was flipped over, if it was covered, what I would have to do is deal with this in such a way that I could check that indicator without contaminating a whole bunch of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that I cannot see that. I'm going to take my hands, again, double gloved, because if this is not sterile, I don't want to have to go through all of the re-scrubbing. I'm going to reach straight in and pull up. I'm still going to have my circulator check the filters. And then I'm going to bring this over and set it onto my mayo stand. This way, if this turns out to not be sterile, or we can't tell if it's sterile, I haven't contaminated any of my back table. The only thing I've contaminated is my outer pair of gloves and the mayo stand, which is very easy to then redrape and retail off. So I'm going to look through here. Sure enough, there's my indicator. It's okay. It's all good. So my instruments are okay, which means it's time to bring them back over to our back table but I have everything else in the way first. So again, as soon as I can, let's expand that sterile field and that next item is gonna be the ring stand. So I'm gonna grab my ring stand cover, my half sheet, and I'm gonna come over here. Now I can't touch this thing and I kinda of wanna be on this side in order to drape this properly, but that gets me a little too close to that wall. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my foot. Turn it around like that. Now, I have my drape. 
find the top piece. I'm only grabbing the top flap, not any of these other folds, just the top one. I'll go out, drop it down, put my hand here, go out, and drop it down. I can touch here in the middle, but nowhere on the sides. At this point, I'm going to want to turn it a little bit. I can reach into the middle, turn it this way, and then in order to complete draping, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift in here and find this first flap on each side. I do not want to grab down below the edges here. I don't want to grab down below the edges here. So I try to stay as close to the middle as I can. Find that first flap here. Find that first flap here. I'm going to reach in and pull my hands apart like this and let it fall. Sometimes it won't unfold completely, in which case you're going to use your hands again inside, pushing those folds towards the outside, never over the edge. With the ring stand draped, I can grab my basin, take it, and press it in, keeping my hands above and within the basin itself. From here, I can grab the top and slide the ring stand over close to my back table, close enough that nobody can walk through there, but not exactly touching, so we're going to get kind of close, like about there. Now, back to my back table. I've got this pile here. This one's easy. All I have to do, remember, we want to touch things as few of times as possible. Once is preferable. So here's my one touch. I'm going to bring it over and set it in this corner, and that's where I want it to stay. I have the rest of this area. These items, they're kind of in the way right now, so I am going to have to touch these twice. I'm going to pick them up and set them over here for now. I'm going to towel off the back table. Place one towel along the front. Place another towel along the side, always working from the center of the table and then pulling outward so that no parts of the towel drape over the edges of the table. I've got those two in place and I've got a nice spot right here for my instruments. I know that again these are clean so I can pick them up, carry them over and I like to butt them right up against my drape right about there. That gives me lots of room on this side that I can work. So at this point again only touching things once I want to build my back table setup. The way I do it is I start at the corners that's where the biggest items are going to be, and then the smaller items sort of build out from there. And I start at this corner, which is where my needle book is going to be, and I'm going to build out smaller items from there. So let's see what I have in my basin set. First things that I can grab. I'm not going to go digging for anything, I'm just going to grab the first thing that I see. It happens to be this kidney basin. That's going to go right about there. I've got my needle book. Lots of goodies in there. Got my pitcher in my bowl. I'm just going to leave the pitcher in the bowl for this point at this point and take my sponges out. Because of these tails on the laps, I'm going to put the laps in front and the Raytex are going to set in the back. What else do I have? I have suction, bovi, and all those things are going to stay in there. Okay, so I'll distribute the items in my kidney basin. Acepto labels. I can sort of tuck them under here. Got my pen. Over there. Sponges. Like that. Take my ties. Some sutures. Suture there. Alright. And separate my medicine cup from my specimen cup. At this point, I'm ready for my instruments, but in order to place the instruments well, I need a couple of rolls. I make my long roll doing a single hamburger fold and then rolling from the short side. And leaving a few inch gap between the roll and the tray. Make another short roll over here. 
In this case, I'm going to do a hamburger fold and then another hamburger fold. That's what's going to make it shorter. And starting on the end with lots of little pieces, I'm going to do a nice tight roll. There. Once I've got my rolls ready, I'm ready to bring my stringer out. Flip the stringer over. I check the tips of the, the instruments. Sometimes you can get some bio burden in there. So I'm sort of looking around, making sure the tips look clean. There's nothing stuck in there. If there was something stuck in any of these, that would mean they would be contaminated. And that means everything that I've dealt with so far is contaminated and I have to start all over. Fortunately, mine looks nice and clean. So I can take these, set them down on the stringer, and I can start to distribute the rest of my instruments. Got my bag of goodies here. Empty that out. I start with my forceps. The system that I use is I put all my smooth forceps on one side and all my tooth forceps on the other. That way I know which I'm going to get on each side. And I always do it the same way every time I set up my case. So I always know this side is smooth, and this side has the teeth. So I start with my adsense, they're nice and short. Teeth, smooth. Got some more teeth over here. Then I go to the next longest ones. I've got some plain tooth, plain smooth. I've got another plain smooth. And then finally my debakis, which are smooth, they're gonna go here. The longest one I put towards the center because it takes up so much room. More tooth. Got my knife handles, and I got my Fraser, which is a suction. I've also got a Yankauer over here on my basin set, so I'm going to place the two of them together so I count them together. Next, I'll go to set up my retractors. Cushings will never stand here, so I like to stick them into the little handle. Take my Army Navy's long end over the back. That's the most stable position that I've found. Parker's can go next to it. Got my Wheaties. And then my sends, I want to check. Sometimes I've got dull ones and sharp ones. I want to keep them together. So I'll put my sharp ones together. And I'll put my dull ones together. Now I'm just about ready to start my count, but before I do, I realize that I still have four more towels that I have to deal with. These are the towels that we're going to use to square off the incision site. Ideally, I probably should have done this while I was making my rolls. I forgot and put my instruments out, but that's okay. I caught myself. I can go back and fix it now. Start with my four towels. I'll stretch them out, watching that they don't go over the edge. Fold one towards me. Fold another one towards me. Third one towards me. And the fourth one, I'm going to fold away from me. Now the reason for this is that when I go to hand these to my surgeon, it's going to make it easier for the surgeon because they're going to come out in the order that the surgeon is going to use them. So three towards you, one away is the pattern that I use. Then I can fold this in half and maybe give it a little corner turn and that makes it a little bit easier to catch. These are going to be used after my surgeon gets the gown and gloves. So I'm going to place these under here. This way everything's in order. The surgeon will get the towel, then the gown, then I'll hand the towels, and then finally the drape. So everything's in the right order. Okay, so now I'm ready to start my count. First thing you count is your sponges, and always the first sponge you count is your Raytex. With my Raytex, see how there's lots of little edges here? I don't like those. I like to count this side. This side has one fold for every Raytac. So I'm going to put this on the top. I'm going to set them right here. And I'm going to grab them one at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to do the same thing with my laps. Watching these tails that they don't go over the edge. One, two, three, four, five. Do I have any other sponges? Indeed I do. I have my kit nerds. One, two, three, four, five. 
So on my sponges, next I move on to my sharps. I have one hypo needle. So I'm going to say hypo needle one. Knife blades, one, two, three. Now I have suture needles. I've got a lot going on here, so let's see what I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I have 14. Now these guys, this is silk. This is ties. There is no needle on these. It's simply suture. So I do not have to count these. I have one more sharp I need to count. And that's gonna be my bovie tip. Pull that out to make sure it is indeed there. One bovie tip. And then while I'm over here is when we make a nice transition to our disposable item, which happens to be the scratch pad that goes with the bovie tip. So it's usually one bovie tip, one scratch pad. My other disposable item is going to be my pen, one pen, three pieces, and I have a yank hour suction. One yank hour suction, and while I'm here, it's a nice transition into my metal instruments, one Fraser suction. Now this one is a little tricky because Frasers sometimes come in two pieces. So in this case, it's going to be one Fraser, two pieces. From here, I can go to my stringers. I like to use the back of my knife handle. This way I can look at the tips of each of these and identify them as I count. So I'm going to do towel clips. One, two, three, four. Curved mosquitoes. One, two, three, four. Straight mosquitoes. One, two. Curved cryles. One, two, three, four. Straight cryles. One, two. Babcock. One, two. Alice. One, two, three, four. Coker, one, two, Kelly Peens, one, two, needle holders, count them all together. One, two, three, scissors all together. One, two, three, sponge sticks, one, two. And go to my retractors. Pushing vein, one, two, Army Navy, one, two, Parker, one, two, Wheatlander, one, two, Sens. These are tricky. You want to show your circulator what they are. These are dull Sens, one, two, sharp Sens, one, two. From there, I can look at my forceps, count them all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the last thing that I have, right back to my knife handles, one, two, and three. And that's it, I've completed my counts.